Hey guys, what's going on? It's Salvatore here, and today we're going to be talking about God of War Ragnarok and a theory that I've seen a lot of people actually have, and honestly, I just want to give my opinion on it too. So, before we get into the video, let's try to get to like 500 likes. You guys have been f just, just destroying these God of War videos. I, I'm like literally baffled at the fact that these videos are even doing slightly decent, let alone getting like 250,000 views. It's actually kind of surprising. And I thank you guys all for the support. Every single one of you that's new and has been watching this channel for like five days. <laughs> Thank you so much. So let's get into the video. Uh, will Atreus betray Kratos at some point in this game? Now, personally, honestly, from what they showed in the trailer, if we're just going to go off that assumption, uh, I'll also bring in the mural real quick. Uh, that's also going to be a part of this theory. I also believe that the dialogue in the theory is just, you know, there's a lot of conflicting and there's a lot of conflict between, you know, Kratos and Atreus in their mindset. So basically, I, I can see Atreus at some point running off. You know, I can see a section with Kratos being alone trying to find uh, Atreus. And honestly, I think Tyr might be the catalyst of a lot of this, where he's trying to show Loki, or I'm sorry, Atreus, you know, who Loki can be. And like Atreus finds that type of leadership and that type of guardianship in Tyr and decides to follow him on his path on whatever Tyr is trying to do, which kind of forces Kratos to have to, you know, involve himself within Ragnarok in some point. It actually is something that, you know, it makes sense. And it honestly is a betrayal that is not necessarily in vicious intent. It's literally him, you know, his son trying to become who he wants to be, which, of course, it kind of sounds like it's something that would fall in line within the God of War games, uh, especially at least these new ones. And, uh, you know, Loki is such an interesting and mysterious character within Norse mythology itself that I could literally see them, like, having Atreus switch his name to Loki while he's with Tyr and essentially try to make his own legacy within this uh, game. And, you know, it also, there is a lot of people saying that Atreus will become a playable character within the next God of War game and the fact that Kratos will die. And, you know, the mural is like 100% fact that that is Kratos dying. So, you know, you know, for the sake of the series, let's just say that that is Kratos. And let's just say that is Kratos literally dying. And that's Atreus doing something to rather revive Kratos, which let's just say he's probably going to go to fucking Valhalla and he's going to just kill everybody in there. But there could be a good chance that, you know, maybe he doesn't have that type of power. Maybe he doesn't go out fighting. He, he goes out in a way that makes him look slightly pathetic, which would be... You know, I would anger a lot of people, but let's just say that happens. You know, Atreus at some point would be the playable character. And, I, you know, I don't think that would be such a bad idea. I think that would be actually a really interesting, neat concept that they could play with here is having Atreus be his own playable character instead of, you know, having Kratos there the entire time just for like a little section, you know, and even still. Again, if Kratos dies, he's most likely coming back. Like, this guy has literally evaded death a bajillion times. I've made a video on it. You guys can go watch it. But, you know, I, I just don't see Atreus doing anything bad to Kratos in that mural. And I also don't necessarily see Kratos, like, being betrayed like that, especially after the ending of the last game, how it literally all ended with Kratos trying to warn his son that, no, not all gods, uh, you know, eventually kill their, their parents and that Loki can be a lot better than who he was and you know that's the message of the entire last game so I, I do see Atreus kind of betraying Kratos emotionally in a way that you know actually has good intention behind it but I just don't see Atreus like flat out viciously like doing something evil to his father he has like literally no motivation to like I doubt Kratos could do anything evil like the worst thing Kratos is doing is literally betraying his wishes to go and find out what Loki can be in this universe. So, you know, I, I, I like the theory, and I can't wait to see what they do with, like, the relationship between Kratos and Atreus. So tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I just wanted to make a quick five-minute video. Again, I appreciate all the new subscribers and everybody who has, of course, joined from the last few videos. I mean, the last video got, like, 46,000 views, and that's just that's just incredible, and, you know, it, it really does help a lot. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace out.